So I spent a whole day trying to learn how to crochet and I crochet this hat which I think is pretty cute and I'm going to wear it even though I am indoors this is made of wool and it's extremely hot on my head so hi hello welcome back to my channel uh, I know I've been absent a little bit but I'm slowly getting back on this crypto thing and it's actually been really good to film and to practice my English because I have some English exam coming up so I thought we could discuss some of the books that I got since I haven't done a book haul since last November and last November was my birthday and I got a lot of books so we have a lot of books to get through but let's just get started in this video I'm not going to count any of the mangas that I got because there are a lot of them and I think I'll do a separate haul for them aside from one because it's a standalone and standalone mangas are pretty rare so I'm just gonna include it here actually before we start I just wanted to say that uh, I got a lot of books in this haul but 80% of them are either secondhand or they were gifted to me and also I wanted to say that if you could please spare some like minutes of your life to go check into the description there are some very important links that can help a lot of people especially in this time of need a lot of countries are going through some environmental disasters and there's also a global pandemic still outside so uh, please check them out there into the description it takes like a second if you can donate, please do that. If you don't, there are just some petitions that you can sign. Thank you. So let's start with one of the books that I said I was going to finish last year and I still haven't, but I thought it was going to be like the best book of last year. And I still read of the majority of this book last year. It's excellent. And I think a historical piece of his, a historical piece of history. I I've just gone through my exams and I've got two brain cells both thrive this is writer revisited by ellie watt i talked at length about this book it's basically vintage gaze sad and yearning this is my catchphrase for this book these are all the things that i loved so far please pick it up it's great it's written in a beautiful way this is another book that i've talked about at length in my video so i'm going to be speedy about this this is fairy oak the last history by elizabeth Agnone. this is the like lost story in a series of books called Fairy Oak that was very near dear to my heart when I was younger and it's a super popular series in Italy. Um, Elisabetta Nione is also like the creator of Witch, if you ever watched that. Yeah, she, she is the one. I said I was going to mention just one manga but apparently I have two. This is Strange by Iriko Tsuyuki. This is one of the best read of last year. Uh, this is a series of short stories in manga form and it talks about friendship. Friendship between guys and people with non more specified identities. The first short story is about a drag queen which was so interesting and I loved it a lot. I'm going to briefly mention this book because uh, it's a poetry collection and the only one that I read last year and I've read it because it's because one of my friends wrote it. This is Padronanza by Luca Cesaro. He doesn't know I have a booktube channel, but just in case, dovevo farlo, dovevo menzionare questo libro. Giusto per, perché, perché dovevo. Uh, I talked about this book with the author, who is one of my friends from our writing club, and I think he is a very good poet, so. If you're Italian or if you know Italian and you want to support one of my friends, Padre um, So here in Venice we have something called like a book swapping. You put out of your windows wheel all the books that you don't want and people can pick them up and then give back some of their books that they don't want. So I picked up and my mom picked up for me some of these books that I know nothing about. It's called Il Candelabro del Tempio by Delhi. Uh, which roughly translates to the chandelier of the temple. It's a, a series of romance books that my great-grandma used to love, so I, I had to pick it up because she was obsessed with this, apparently. And then my mom picked up for me two books. One is Pian della Tortilla by Steinbeck or uh, Tortilla Flat, uh, and the other one is Una piccola libreria a Parigi by Nina George. 
I'm going to like insert the English title if you want to know what it is because I have no idea this is a German book. Another two books I said I will read last year but uh, still haven't for two very different reasons. Um, the first one is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. Uh, I, I, I am on the verge of doing up in this book. It's very bad. Very bad. <laughs> but like sometimes it's the hilarious kind and this is what is keeping me like going forward and I acquired the audiobook so maybe maybe and then for a very different reason uh The Poppy War by Ara Frank uh this book scares me shitless and <laughs> everybody on Twitter like says that this series crushes your soul so I was not in the mood for that and <laughs> I don't know if I ever will but I really, really want to read this book, really, so much. As I said in many of my videos, I, re <laughs> I regressed back to my Batman phase and I acquired many, many Batman comics in these couple of months, but I, I'm not going to include those, I'm going to do like a separate haul for comics and mangas, as I said, but there's one thing that I have a story for that I have to mention, and it's this giant deluxe super lustrous edition of Batman the Killing Joke and I thought I was ordering like the original just like either black and white or color version I wasn't sure which one was it but I I was okay with both of them I apparently got the 30th anniversary edition in which it has the black and gray original version the color new version and all the notes and the dialogues from the writers and designers of the series. It was craziness. Last year I decided that for my shyness, because I am extremely shy if you didn't know, uh, this, this booktube channel was created partly because I wanted to be less shy. Uh, and it's working, it's working, it's all going into therapy. But part of that was me going to a theatre club. And it was amazing, it is still amazing, we're working on a script that is based on Donne al Parlamento by Aristophane. So this is Women at the Parliament by the ancient Greek poet and philosopher and writer Aristophane. And it is one, hilarious, because it's it talks about women getting the power in the Greek Parliament. Yes. And it's, it's uh, so great because it, it is in the Italian here and original Greek here. So, do you, I, I think we are kind of acquainted with each other, like you know me, I don't really know you, but you know me. Um, aside from Batman, there was another thing I got really, really into, like back into during the quarantine. Star Trek, I got some Star Trek books, again, I have tons of these. Um, so I I'll be quick, I promise, but these are like my prized possessions. These are all very, very used copies of the first editions of these books. So, and they cost me like $2 each, which was great. This is the new Star Trek novel, Dr. Zoder by Diane Duan, which is one of my favorite authors ever. She was the one who wrote Spock's World. Um, then I have the novelization of the second Star Trek movie, uh, the Wrath of Khan by Wanda McIntyre, Shell Game by M Melissa Crandall, The Final Nexus by Jean Louise. I ordered all of those books and apparently someone thought to give me a gift. I have no idea. I haven't bought this book. I got like, like I lent no money to gain possession of this book. They just gave it to me. It was, it was great. Um, this is how much for just a planet by John M. Ford. This is basically a Star Trek musical. It's a novel, but it's it's filled with songs and it goes into song breaks just like a musical movie. TikTok. If you have got like any musical spare, the Star Trek musical would be wonderful. So these were purchases that I made with a gift card of some sort that I got for my birthday. So Let's get started with, um, honestly, one of the most exciting books that I got last year. No, I got it this year, I think in January. Uh, and this is the latest Murakami novels 
uh, Abandonar o Gato by Haruki Murakami. This is the an unpublished novel by him and the only one that talks about his life and his relationship with his dad. I am very intrigued because I love Haruki Murakami. Then I got actually a very interesting book that I picked up on a whim, but it's very, very interesting. It's kind of like, it crosses the line between middle grade and YA and it's N.E.O. or Neo, La Caduta del Sole di Ferro by Michel Dussy. This is a French book and it talks about a kind of like a semi-dystopian society in which everything has gone downhill because of climate change. This is what drawn me to this book. And we follow some kids that have like regrouped into gangs and they have made war to each other. And we're in Paris, so this is like Eiffel Tower. And then I have one of my most anticipated books ever, even though apparently everybody who read it hated it. But I, I, I don't know, I'm still hopeful. And it's Radio Player 2 by Ernest Klein in the floppy paperback edition. I am not that hopeful, but I want to be entertained. And I also, I'm also very curious, what are you going to do? Like Ready Player One was such a great standalone. What are you going to do with this one? So another book that I actually picked up, I, I was the one that picked it up from a secondhand bookshop. And I found this gem for five euros, which is really, really cheap. A Room with a View by Ian Forster, who is the author of Maurice, one of the best gay books, like the vintage gay books that ever existed. This is a more heterosexual book from what I got from the synopsis, but still, I, I, mm, I love Ian Forster so much, so much. Uh, then, to quench my thirst for uh, like me going to Japan, because I was supposed to go, this year, this was going to be my second trip to Japan with my dad, but apparently all the pandemic, who, who, who could have thought? Um, I bought this <laughs> little book, which I have a premonition that is going to be really bad. This is Un Tekon Biscotti a Tokyo by Julie Kaplan. The original title is The Little Tea Shop in Tokyo, so it's a Roma story set in Tokyo. But the protagonist is not Japanese, it, it, the protagonist is a travel vlogger, so I have really low hopes for these. The next book was a present for my birthday from my grandma, so Nonna, questo lo sto facendo per te, questo libro. La mamma vuole assolutamente che io legga questo libro, lo farò. Um, but here it is, this is Helgoland by Carlo Rovelli. This is another travel book, it's more like a, a discover adventure, not like an adventure, like a, a scientific discovery story uh, about the North Sea and about like Iceland and all those countries. And then my mom picked up this book, it, it's second hand, she didn't know what it was and she didn't know that it's by one of the like the lumineers of sci-fi, like one of the greatest sci-fi authors that we have right now and it's <laughs> La Pista dell'Orrore by Roger Zelazny. The original title is Damnation Alley. If you didn't know, Zelazny won three Nebula Awards and six Hugo Awards. Uh, and he wrote so, so many short stories collection and short books and novels, all sci-fis and fantasies, and he's great. And she didn't know, which was very lucky for me because now I've got this. Next three books, I think they belong together. I don't know with which power of association I declare that, but they go together. This Side of Paradise by Francis Scott Fitzgerald. I am uh, three quarters in. It's an interesting book. Uh, it's a really, really slow paced book. It basically retells the life of the author when he was in college, but in a novelization form. So he says, oh, the protagonist's name is Amory, and it's totally not me, but it, it's him. It's, it's Francis Scott Fitzgerald's life in a novel form. So Th there's also like a very weird passage, a little gay moment, which I didn't, underst I didn't understand. I need someone to please explain it to me. And the next one is the second recommendation. He said that this was the best book that he read last year. And then he described the, the, the entire plot to me. And I was left flabbergasted. <laughs> it's Limonov by Manuel Carrer. 
Um, if you don't know, Limanov is a very controversial figure in the history of the world. He did so many crazy things. He traveled from Russia to basically all the Eastern European countries and wrecked havoc everywhere. He is a very like prominent political figure in Russia. Th this is a, a recollection of, it, of true events. This is Limonov's life as it happened. Limonov apparently was cheated on by all of his wives and then he said, I'm gonna go for dudes. And the way he went about it with this like whole homosexual realization was with a very long candle. I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that. And the last one of the trio is a book that I'm going to read for a reading vlog because I asked on Twitter if anybody wanted a reading vlog and apparently a lot of people say yes. So uh, this is The Queen's Gambit by Walter Travis. Yes, the book that inspired the TV show, which I saw and loved a lot. So I wanted to read the book that inspired it. So I'm going to call this last file the Are you bisexual file? The answer is yes, which is why I bought this book. <laughs> the first one is one that I actually picked up myself. is a, a poetry and essays collection and it's Free David Thoreau, Ascoltare gli alberi. So if you don't know who Thoreau is, uh, Henry David Thoreau is basically my gay guru of life. He talks about plants, he started a whole like nature in poetry and uh, nature reclaiming life on its earth, like uh, uh, as a literature movement which spawned so many poems who shall not be named but I got in my maturity test exam at the end of high school, which was a nightmare. Uh, so I wanted to pay a little homage with this little book of essay and poems. And it's all about nature and the spirits of trees. I said that for Christmas there was one book series that I really wanted and it was a very popular series. And two people came to the rescue. One was my friend Sarah who got me Gideon the Nymph and Harrow the Nymph in hardcover form for my birthday and Christmas. Sara, tu non hai idea di quanto io ti voglio bene, ti do tre bacini tutti in fronte. But then, then, because I, I am blessed with internet friends. So I got, I got like the English copy of Gideon the Nymph in paperback, the one who is like, it, it's so cool. It has these beautiful pages and, and, uh, and one of my Twitter friends, Oceanize, um, I'm going to leave her links down below because she is awesome and I, I love her so much and she got me this. And the last one in the are you bisexual slash are you gay category is uh, Christopher and his kind by Christopher Isherwood. This is another true story. It's a memoir by Christopher Isherwood. This is one of the few authors that I actually haven't read from that talks about LGBTQ plus themes. And this is a recollection of his life. And in this book, he encounters many other authors that I've read from. This talks about his life with his partner, which I think is going to be really poignant and really beautiful. So this was an impulse buy because everybody says it's good and everybody said it's sapphic, which sapphic sci-fi is good. On a sunbeam by Terry Walden. Um, I actually looked at the drawings and found them beautiful and I heard it's sapphic so I had to get it. Here it is, the other manga that I wanted to talk about. This is Bono Kuni Vasukarako. It means the Lanterns Festival and it's a little cute stories about yokais and spirits at the Lanterns Festival. And it, the drawings are really simplistic if you can see it. But it, it really draw me in because I love stories about traditional festivals in Japan. So. Yeah. I don't want to call this controversial, but I want to call this a book about things that people don't usually want to talk about. 
This is Club Godo by Jules Pla. So this talks about sex, basically, but not in a way that you would expect. This talks about sex for everybody. Like this book talks about pleasure. It talks about ways to safely know your body, what feels good, and it talks to everybody. It talks to men, it talks to women, it talks to non-binary people and trans people. It's very inclusive with the ways in which it is written, very neutral pronouns and very inclusive language, which I think is wonderful. It also talks about like um, STDs and orgasms and it's all <laughs> I don't think I can I don't think I can show it to you but it's all illustrated to like better make you understand what to do. I hope it gets translated into many different languages. So if you've been on my channel for a long time you know that I have a, a really big love for Chinese authors of graphic novels and uh, they call it manhua I think um, and one of my favorite this bad boy right here by Bolzal. Tu sei il colore più bel colore del mondo. I cannot read my, my own language. This roughly translates to you are the most beautiful color in the world and it's a wonderful graphic novel. And it's perfect for uh, people who like wear glasses because it's really really big and really really heavy actually. But the illustrations and, and the, the writings in it it's really big and it, it's a story about growing up and like painful memories tied to you growing up and i think it's going to be really poignant uh, for me then another impulse buy and the second to last book in this haul uh, i saw this book on television because yes on italian television they also talk about books it's great it's honestly great um this is <laughs> le fille di Yis by M.T. Anderson. It's a retelling of a classic English folk tale and the drawings are honestly very simple, very um, childlike. It, it brings me childlike wonder. The colors are beautiful so I cannot wait to start this. Best for last. I have a story about this graphic novel. I once randomly went to a comics convention in Padova, my birth town, and I got to this little stand in one corner there were no people going to it and i was like the drawings in the comics these two girls are, are drawings are, are, are like incredible and so i went there i was super awkward super shy and i bought their first volume of their series and i got it signed <laughs> it was the best experience of my life because that graphic novel is one of my favorite of all times and now i got the second volume <laughs> the graphic novel is called Deva and the second volume is called A Tale of Hope by Martina Abatelli and when I tell you this this is wonderful this is a fantasy story about gods and demigods in a land um, divided into different guilds or castes not castes like uh, different dynasties, different dynasties, so different families have different territories and there is a, a big war going on and the protagonist is a demigod. The third volume is going to be the last one and I, I patiently await for that to arrive. That was my haul, that was long. I should do hauls more frequently when I get like books for my birthday and Christmas because I got so many. Uh, I hope you had fun. I hope I could inspire you to pick up some of those books that I've read and that you saw some more titles that you didn't even know existed. So uh, you've arrived at the end. So again, uh, please check out the links in the descriptions. It, it, it really takes a second to save a life basically. Um, also, socials, I have them, they're down below. If you want to connect with me, like know what I'm up to, I'm always on Twitter, I always respond. Uh, if you want to know what I'm reading, I also have a Goodreads. And if you want to know what I plan on reading, I also have an Amazon wishlist. You don't have to get me anything, but if you want to know what I would like to get from the shop next, um, those are the books. And yeah, 
I hope I'll see you in the next video and goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>